So I used to study music back in the day and at UCT's College of Music. And after I graduated a number of years ago, went into the music business. So doing stuff like gigging, uh, doing some music writing as well. Um, and then I was teaching high school kids for a while, like full time for quite a few years. So now I'm back at UCT studying again and I'm doing a general BA this time and my majors are philosophy, English and law. And it's a bit strange being back after all these years but I'm enjoying it. Duri Danse and his wife Yumna have been married for five years. They support each other in all so aspects of their one. careers Oops. and have many shared interests. Oh my god, am I doing this right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go, go, Feels go, like go. I'm making a mistake. I'm like the chef and you're my minion. <laughs> there, I cooked. Very well I'm done. Totally cooked. Me and Yumna basically met through a mutual friend of ours and we, we bonded over our love of music. Um, she plays guitar and so do, so do I. But one of the things we bonded over was comic books in a big way. A self-confessed geek, Dury has been a fan of comic books and all its associated paraphernalia from a very young age and has an extensive collection of books, toys and figurines. You always have to make sure your hands are absolutely clean, totally dry, free of oils, free of moisture, um, before you handle the goods. These books are really, really old comic books from the 1940s. Um, it's around World War II. Paper was quite scarce at that point, um, and comic books just became super rare after that. For me, it's kind of like, it's not really about the value itself, it's about the value to me, just like having this piece of the past in front of you, knowing that it survived so many years. I mean, this is like, really old, it's like way older than I am. <sighs> okay, so always try not to breathe too much during this process. So uh, first thing you do when you see a comment like this, besides open the page, you wanna take a nice sniff. Oh my God, that's incredible. It's probably the greatest thing you'll ever smell. It's like you're smelling stuff from the 1940s. I hardly ever take these comics out because they're so rare. Um, I always get scared that I'm gonna make a mistake and accidentally rip the page or something like that. But when I do take it out, it's, it's like such a treat. Love this old school art. So Superman was the first superhero ever to grace comic books, arguably. I mean, this stuff is so brilliant and also so cheesy. Issues that come up today are reflected a lot in the modern comic books. Like these days, there's a lot of call for diversity and like you have the first Muslim comic book character, Ms. Marvel, which is pretty cool. They've got gay characters in comic books. Um, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, things have, things are changing with the times, you know, which is pretty cool. I'm going for 
Dewey and Yumna share a home with Dewey's dad, himself a longtime fan of the comic book culture. Although he knows that Dewey has taken over the mantle and gone a lot further in his love for the genre and all out fanboy status. I mean, I grew up with, you know, my parents buying comics and stuff just where, from wherever, you know, wherever we went, if there were comics, they'd get comic books. They were just always in my environment because of my parents. Now I'm going to be picky and pick <laughs> up the feta cheese. Do you want salad dressing on the oven? Oh, a strategy. I used to tag along and buy myself some Disney stuff, so. <laughs> But it was mainly those, and it was actually quite an adventure each Saturday. I think I'm drawing more to read more into American comics, and I'm eclectic, <laughs> sort of English. Dury not only loves to immerse himself in all aspects of the genre, he also loves drawing and writing, a love and talent he inherited from both his parents. Uh, I personally just, like, I started with comic books because I knew if I got into figures, I would probably just take it way too far. And uh, sadly, it gripped me eventually, and I've taken it way too far, and I've got too many stacks of figure boxes. about action figures they kind of provide a confluence of like everything I love in the geeky world you've got movies comic books anime and stuff like that the problem with figures is with comic books uh, you've got like 10 comic books and you've got it like that you've got 10 figures it's like it takes a lot of space up but they're not toys these are not for little kids There you go, and it's got a little protection for the head. I mean, that looks pretty much like you, Jackman, to me. That's pretty convincing. Grrr. Generally, finding some of the stuff in South Africa is pretty hard, so you have to keep your eye out for deals and stuff or shop online, which is what I do a lot to find some of the stuff that you can't find anywhere. 4,000 rand. No one wants standard or gold, you want collectors. Sometimes you have to buy two. You have to buy one that you can actually open and then one you're gonna keep in the box if it's possible. I'm helping getting rid of this coffee. Okay. So me and Yumna, we started out as like really close friends and then from there things escalated. But one of the things we bonded over was comic books in a big way. She really liked Sandman and I don't remember at the time knowing anyone else that, that read Sandman. And to this day, we still go to every signing and every comic convention that pops up our way. She's pretty much a comic fan, just as much as I am. And can you believe I still haven't finished the new Sandman? Overture and yeah, Fight I Club. I still haven't read the new Fight Club. But I have to say again and emphasize, besides his interest in comics, it's really in literature and books and so forth. And I think that's what he got from his mum. With my parents, uh, it's a very interesting story. They were actually illegally married during apartheid time because my mom, my late mom was white South African. My dad is Indian. So they came from completely different backgrounds. Well, she passed away when I was quite young, and I was an illegal baby, obviously during apartheid. Both my parents were very artistic. Um, my dad was always drawing and sketching stuff. Uh, my mom was really into reading, so I grew up with lots of books around. So it almost feels like natural that I was inclined towards comic books. So my sister also passed away a few years, quite a few years ago. 
like we were very close when we were kids. She was one of the few people I actually trusted to read my stuff because she knew how to handle a comic book and that kind of thing. So we would swap each other's comics and read each other's comics and stuff. So because of that, I grew up reading a lot of Jagged and Archie and obviously loving that kind of stuff as well. Before the break, we met Dury Danse, who has taken his love of the comic book genre to the next level with an extensive range of collectibles. Luckily, he found love with a like-minded soul who shares his passion. The invention of the printing press in 1440 largely contributed to picture-illustrated reading becoming a mass medium. In 1826, the Glasgow Looking Glass became known as the first comic strip as it had all the elements that make up the modern comic. Pictures with captions, the use of speech bubbles, satire and caricature. In 1902, Rakuten Kizawa, a Japanese manga artist who created many editorial cartoons and comic strips, was considered by many historians to be the founding father of modern manga. In 1929 in Belgium, Hirsch created The Adventures of Tintin for a comic supplement. During the same period in the United States, newspaper strips started expanding their subject matter beyond humor, with action, adventure, and mystery strips being launched. Finally, in 1934, DC Comics was launched, and in 1938, the first issue of the original run of the comic book series, Action Comic, was published, with Superman on the cover. It is widely considered both the beginning of the superhero genre and the most valuable comic book of all time. In the 1960s, Stan Lee, through Marvel Comics, created characters like Spider-Man, the Hulk, and the Fantastic Four. Lee subsequently led the expansion of Marvel Comics, from a small division of a publishing house into the large multimedia corporation it is today. The industry has exploded over the last few decades with the conventions referred to as fan cons taking place in countries all over the world. Out of these conventions also evolved the art of cosplay, a contraction of costume play, whereby fans dress up to represent a specific character. Nikki McGeorge is also a huge comic book fan, and from her love of the genre, she discovered cosplay. She plans to take part in the open cosplay competition at Cape Town's second annual fan con. Everybody has two sides of themselves, what they show to the public and who they are when no one's watching, you know. So the only, I think the only difference from, you know, your everyday person is mine's just more prominent than your everyday person. So I'm me when I'm working on my computer and how I am with my friends on the weekends. Then there's me on a stage in a cosplay outfit. I'm just more in your face about it, I suppose. I think it's the creative aspect because you, you end up in something that you have made. You've physically made the outfit yourself. You've put the time and effort in. Um, I don't actually know why. I have no idea, like there's nothing specific in my brain as to, okay, cool, this is, this is why I love it so much. I just do. And at Kim Patsugal, she's actually going to be at Cos Achat FanCon. So I can't wait. I'm just like, yay, I get to meet her. She's like my hero. Um, yeah, so I was supposed to do a character from League of Legends called Blood Moon Diana. So I was super keen on that, and my favorite cosplayer, who is, happens to be a local cosplayer, is Kinpatsu, and she was busy working on it. So as she was working, she was posting um, progress photos of what she was doing and, you know, it makes it easier to follow the process and to make it yourself. But the thing is, I didn't want to, like, jump in and go and do this cosplay and it's sort of half done. And if I can't get the wig right, then it's not going to look right. So I scrapped that idea and just before the wedding, um, League of Legends released a new character called Zaya. Um, and she is a harpy, so a harpy is from Greek mythology and it's got the top half of a woman and the bottom half of a bird. So I decided, okay, cool, I'm going to cosplay it. So, I mean, like, there's a lot of details on the feather there of her cloak. There's a lot of details on the skull of the bird that's on her shoulder. Um, again, the devil's in the detail. <laughs> 
We arrived back from honeymoon on Saturday night. So we unpacked everything and we poured ourselves a drink and I started working. <laughs> yeah, like nights I got back. Cause I mean, essentially what, it's a week. I'm cramming all of this into a week. So hating life right now, but it's gonna pay off on it well. He says he's not interested in it, but he actually is. I don't want you to look like crap. Yeah, you see. No, this is way too thin. No, it's not too thin. Look at that, it's like a bat here. You're a bat. That looks way better. Nikki's husband Craig, who is not always so sure why she wants to dress up, is nonetheless supportive and is helping Nikki in any way he can to finish her costume. I mean, no matter whatever it is that I want to do, he's always there, he's always supportive, he's always willing to get involved and I mean, as much as he doesn't want to do the stuff that I'm doing, he's super happy to be like there and helping and involved and he's, yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> and if you look there, do you not think the base of the ear needs to be wider? So that it does. You make it look good, not look stupid. None of these are local. The first day I met him, I was like, you look like Ben Affleck. And he's like, no, Ben Affleck looks like me. Now that Ben Affleck's Batman, I'm like, I'm married to Batman. <laughs> Driving me so crazy, driving me insane. I can't live without your love. You've got my heart in flames. You set my heart on fire. I wasn't exactly in the popular crowd in school. All the free periods that I had, I would go and paint, put all my effort into my art. Um, by the time I was in high school, I was very much, well, this is me. If you don't like it, cool story, you know? So I was very much my own person and also going into college and as I was getting older, like now I'm incredibly confident with who I am. Very creative, still creative. So that's pulled through throughout my life. One day I woke up and I think I tried to put on a pair of jeans and they didn't fit. And I was like, no, this is not on now because these were the biggest pair of jeans that I had. Um, so I thought, no, 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 something has to be done. So I got hold of a um, nutritionist, um, the coach, and she sort of helped me and I lost, I think about 18 kilos. Um, so that was quite a rapid transformation. As difficult as it was going through, you know, eating egg whites and fish and it's, the food isn't fun. <laughs> it's definitely not fun. The rest is easy, like all the foam work and all the accessories and everything has been super easy to do. It's been a busy few days for Nikki and time. both her mother yeah. and her husband and are still hard at work helping her finish her outfit on time. She loved to dress up when she was little and then when her brother was born six years later, she used to dress him up and dress herself up and sing to him and play and that kind of thing. It was so cute. It was so cute. So that thing, it's always been there, just the whole dress up thing. And one of her favorite sayings is shiny things, but you should hear her say it. Shiny things. Just like that. So anything that shines and sparkles and if you can combine that with dress up, you've won her heart for sure. <laughs> And then stitch it in there and then have a seam at the front so that you can put it. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we'll wrap the Velcro around the arm and the inside of the bracer. So it will sit on the inside of the bracer. So all I need to do is when I've got it on, just patch the Velcro. So I'm super happy with how that's come out. Can you see, if you look very carefully here, that is actually one piece of dress there. Okay, this is like a clay thing. Yes, yeah, so and where do we start? <laughs> we, will, we will have to stitch it. Because I don't think it should be loose. You can't stitch it at the end. You're going to have to have the appearance of it being loose. So that there's enough fabric holding it there and stitch it down on yeah. the inside. 
Yeah, I'm slightly more worried about the hood though. I'm more worried about the hood than I am the dress. It's not really a regular hood. No. And a normal hood pattern would just collapse on your head, like if you hadn't, you know. Like a hoodie or. or... Yeah. So with the hood, it's more like a space helmet kind of hood and we're trying to reinforce it and build panels into it so that it will stay. Um. <laughs> 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 yeah, and Craig thinks this is all very funny. <laughs> She's been working with that. having an engineer on board. Cosplay. Dressing up, yeah, she likes to do that. Always. Always like to dress up. For me, it's, it's not in there, really. But I'll hop out gladly. Yeah, you've been very good about it, though, Craig. Over the years, you've been so supportive of it. That's right, that was the first thing. Like, if you dress up, you have a lot of costumes. It's, Okay. Not all people who like to dress up are weird, thank you. I met her first and then she started changing okay. to be weird. Now, so the dress is doing this. She put the ring on first mm -hmm. and then because she changed. The <laughs> you remember I cut this summer. Yeah. I think he's got a lot of hidden skills that he doesn't even know he has. And I watch anime, I have hidden talent in there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, everyone has that hidden ability. Yeah. Who hasn't grown up with Dragon Ball Z? Post. Coming from school, DBZ's on. Yeah. I think it went through a phase where sort of being a geek was a, a bad thing, you know, like especially when I was in school, like we were labelled, I mean, oh, Pokemon geeks, you know, whatever. Whereas now, I mean, look at Pokemon Go last year. Pokemon used to be a very typical, like, geek thing. So I, I, I find now, the sort of geek community is on the rise because all the, I mean, look at Marvel, all the Marvel movies, all the Captain America, everybody loves those films. So the movies, the comics, and now cosplay is sort of coming into that as well. So I find as sort of Hollywood is romanticizing this idea of the comics and all that kind of thing, it's slowly starting to come back up to the surface and it's not a negative thing anymore. It's actually something that people are quite interested in. 10 years from now, we'll look back at this and be like, oh my God, what were we doing? <laughs> And you'll be, remember that Friday night? Yeah, that crazy Friday night. Lastminute.com. Um, she has a very strong moral compass. And she would definitely go after characters that, that there's that passion and that fire for whatever it is that they're doing, but that there's a very strong moral story behind it. But so I could definitely see when she sent me that clip, I could see why she went for this this particular character that um, and the fact that there is a rebel in her name would just seal it for her as well. Drama has a lot to do with it because you need to go and be in character and you can't be prancing around throwing glitter everywhere and you know that kind of thing you have to be you know, like this character now she's very serious she's on a mission she's got something to do no smiling with teeth. <laughs> there's this there's that scene where she literally's like oh my word and carries on. Earlier, we met Nikki McGeorge, a very busy woman with many interests and passions, including her love of comic books and cosplay. Nikki is also not opposed to getting her family in to help her when needed. Philosophy, I've just always enjoyed, you know, just exploring questions of the universe. And law, I thought, would be nice to do something stable. And um, it's a lot of work, but I'm really enjoying it. Dury, Yumna, and a group of their friends are settling in for one of their regular Thursday night sessions of board gaming. Oh. Oh. The Game yeah. Master begins. My phone can sense me. Rigged, rigged. <laughs> Bloody favoritism. Okay. Many of the games they play are based on the comic books, graphic and fantasy novels they love. Yeah, we hook up. I hook up with some friends whenever we can to get around and play some tabletop games. <laughs> and yeah, it's basically what's happening is it's a fantasy style board game where um, it's a little bit more elaborate than your average family-style board games that you get. 
like people who play video games, sometimes it's good to just unplug. I'm getting much be rich. Uh, maybe so you, you can't do that. Why? You first have to go to the deeds office, register. <laughs> <laughs> just buy a building. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I'm going to Waterdeep Harbor. <laughs> Dude, I mean, like director. Card. Card. Um, my one buddy over there is an architect. We've got guys with their own jewelry company. My other friend's a skin therapist. Um, my wife is a doctor, but she's also done many arts-related stuff as well. So everyone's, yeah, everyone's kind of got some kind of creative field that they've either in or have explored. It's nice to use that creativity when we're playing games as well. No, I love you. <laughs> we got married and we have a life together. <laughs> It really can be dragged on quite long to pay. Duty! It's your turn! I have to go because things are getting really, really serious right now. Oh, yeah. It's about to get tense here, man. It's getting tense. It's getting tense. I think the atmosphere is about to change. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Yuri and Yumna are visiting one of their favorite places, Reader's Den Comic Shop. They can spend hours looking through the collections. The owners of the Reader's Den, brothers Nazar and Mahdi Abrams, are longtime fans and experts in all things comic book, and are also the organizers of Cape Town's annual fan con, an event not to be missed by true comic book fans. Does the, the, the Wonder Woman... Something uh, major changed and there was a huge distribution of comics and an influx of comics came into the country. I think this is when people started collecting. This was in the 60s. So we were pretty much sort of the first to actually, you know, take that step to decide to do a shop like this in South Africa. There were still news agents, of course, but in the 90s, this shop became a way for people to access imported comics, which was quite difficult at the time. There was some serious writing happening in comics, so there was an appeal for adults to actually start following mm -hmm. comics. So the earlier sense of collecting changed a lot, you know. It's not just kids who just randomly bought comics. It now became a collector's thing, you know, from the 70s, 80s, 90s afterwards. It became a serious thing where you really have to follow every comic, collect every comic, There's, the values get attached to comics and things. I mean, we've got um, CEOs coming in here and buying comics. Uh, you know, business executives, and we've got people who are cleaning the streets. But um, it literally, it's very, very diverse. And even in terms of gender, also a big change there as well. A lot of women and girls are coming into the store. They're finding something of interest for them. So it's, it's the, there are those changes, but it's really, very diverse in terms of the people that, that, that read comics. These are pretty good. I'm so happy when he did it. I didn't know it was going to turn out that amazingly. Oh, did I was like, you ask, actually? Yeah, I was like, are you doing commissions? And he was like, yeah. Was like, oh. so it was a big thing to get him to do, but he doesn't do it. Yes, that, that would be the... We, we, we only did five at the show. Nice, we got nice. Batman. <laughs> I had to get the goon. No, no, we didn't want to do the goon. We said Batman. You, know, you got Batman? You do Batman. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, thank you so much. It's, it's amazing. But yeah. yeah, he did amazing shading and stuff, and it just yeah, looked yeah. so he good. He spends a lot of time on it. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty happy. And he wasn't expensive. Man. Awesome, man. It was nice to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like <laughs> chilling with rock stars. That's basically how rock stars are. Yeah, so it's rock stars for us, and everyone else is like, who are these people? Well, exactly. like, Uh, many people have called it, you know, comic books sort of the superheroes at least, the modern mythology of 20th century and beyond, as opposed to Greek and Norse mythology, say, of centuries past. Like any art form, it will reflect the society that these things are created in. In America, you can't get it, yeah, it's very cool. We are not all this living in the basement type of thing. <laughs> we are regular people. We, we, we... Everybody is the same, you know. Well, we used to live in the basement, but I think we've come out of the basement. We've come out so of the basement, yeah. but just that I think, um, yeah, we've, we are regular people, 
practice that's one of the things we do it's one of our hobbies yes it's maybe all encompassing because we really enjoy it it's something that really gets us fired up but it's just out there we're doing the regular things that everybody else is doing you know yeah I remember you helped me at do you guys watch Guardians already? No. no we also are uninitiated well, in that, when sadly. Come out of 2D. Yeah. So, 2D, yeah. Don't this 3D thing's such a scam. <laughs> yeah. I do not That's really fine. fine. Like most serious comic book fans, Dury has studied the genre extensively and can talk about it to an almost academic level. If you look at a comic book, it's kind of like a piece of art mixed with literature, and it has all kinds of different um, subjects thrown into one. So as I was growing up, you know, I didn't just look at comic books as just escapism. Like lots of people just think of it, oh, as like an entertainment thing. But for me, it was also education, because comic book reading is just like normal reading. You learn lots of stuff, things on philosophy, things of ideologies, things about languages, things about people. Um, every kind of subject you can think of has been encapsulated in some other comic book. And like a lot of the comic books I read actually correspond very well to the world of uh, the world in general and South Africa specifically. Uh, like for example, X-Men, which is one of my favorite comic books ever and I've been reading since I was a kid. Um, you've got this idea of mutants, which are non-humans, being persecuted by humans constantly, and yet they still fight for equality and still fight to defend it, um, to defend themselves. Um, and that whole idea, that whole ideology, it basically reminds you of apartheid, where you've got the whole racial divide, um, you've got people fighting for equality, you've got people being discriminated against for being different. Um, other issues like xenophobia, for example, you know, the outsider being seen as like this terrible thing. Um, you see the alienation from the point of the person being the outsider a lot in comic books. You see the point of view of someone else who's not you and you get an idea of what other people feel or think. So I'm playing in several projects at the moment, um, including playing bass in one band. And my main project is called Spud Knuckle. And we're playing a kind of grungy rock mixed with kind of shredding metal kind of vibe. Before the break, we saw how Dury's love for comic books means he and his friends spend many happy evenings playing board games, connected to the genre. He also explained how comic books often have a strong political and social message. Nikki pays the bills as a freelance graphic designer. She spends a lot of her time working in coffee shops around the city. Hi, Liz. 
Minsky, how are you? Good. Listen, I'm busy working on your document now. Um, I just wanted to find out how close to the old logo do you want me to keep things? I grew up as a sort of artist, if you want to call yourself that. I loved art, I loved creating, so I always knew that I wanted to go into something creative. Um, and I just found graphic design to be sort of better than an artist, because I mean, being an artist in this day and age is quite difficult. So at least in this sort of sense, I still get to create things um, and make beautiful artwork, but still, you know, earn an income and a living, and I love it. Like, as the years have progressed, I absolutely love what I do. I'm a photographer as well. Um, I photograph everything from families to friends to engagements to people and their pets. Um, but the wedding season's just wrapped up now. I'm busy editing my last wedding that I shot, I think, two or three weeks ago. Cool. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Okay, you too. Bye. It's the night of Nikki's cosplay competition, and disaster has struck. Nikki's mother is unable to help her finish her costume, and without her mother's sewing skills, she's just unable to get it done in time. It looks like her dream of competing at FanCon will just have to wait another year. Like I said, I'm a perfectionist, my mom is a perfectionist, and we took it to heart, and we put a lot of effort in. It's gonna look amazing when it's done. Um, we just ran out of time, I mean, we worked till four o'clock this morning, it was a full night the night before. We put the effort in, we put the time in, it's just, it's still not enough time. Um, and it breaks my heart, like I'm really, really sad. I was on Instagram all of yesterday, watching everybody else's posts, everyone else's video clips. Um, and it's sad, I really, I really was looking forward to today, but I also don't want to go and just, you know, put on what I have and just go, and I don't have a complete cosplay um, to the, the level that I wanted it to be. I don't want to ruin that. I'd rather stop and not go um, than ruin it with, you know, just throwing all this together because I want to do it, you know? Yeah, so definitely still going today. Um, Kinpatsu is going to be there. She's my hero. I was just yesterday. I'm like, oh, Kinpatsu. I'm Nikki. Nice, I'm to, meet nice to meet you. You are my hero. <laughs> Seriously, you are my hero. I was so excited when you announced that you were going to be coming to FanCon. I was like running around the house going, Kipatsu's coming to FanCon. It is amazing to meet you. I was trying so hard to finish Zaya for today, and I just completely ran out of time. Yeah, I saw you were trying to finish, yeah. I'm so sad, I'm so sad. I, could, I really do feel like maybe I could have stood a chance. Um, yeah, I think definitely on stage I would have been able to put it off, especially the theatric uh, part of it. It's really sad. Um, but it's okay, we're gonna do ECG or EGE um, in July, and it's gonna be ready for that. It's gonna be perfect for that. I've got time now to work on everything. It's gonna be perfect. We're gonna have the feet going. It's gonna be perfect. We're late, we're late, we're so late for FanCon. Away, Steed. Dury and Yumna are finally at FanCon 2017. Ever since this event had its launch a year ago, they have been planning and preparing for this year's convention. Okay, so here we are at FanCon. Pretty stoked. Um, yeah, I'm like loving the turnout and the costumes. It's pretty awesome. of sign today with some uh, pretty amazing writers and artists that showed up here. Some of my favorite books that I brought wrong to get signed. The Goon, creators like right over there. And he, I mean, this is like one of the most iconic 
uh, character creations of late, so looking forward to doing that today. What are you looking forward to? I already did what I was looking forward to. Um, there were some great talks on human satire in comics and representation of women in comics, which were brilliant talks, so yeah, enjoyed that. And also getting stuff signed, but most of my stuff's going to get signed tomorrow. I've commissioned a sketch from Eric Powell, the creator of The Goon, which is like an amazing, amazing comic book creation. Cool. Could you like personalize it to sure. me maybe though? Uh, it's to Dury, D-U-R-I. D-U-R-I. Yeah. Oh my God, wow. <laughs> That's so cool, man. Thank you so much. It's, it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, pretty happy. Got okay. my Goon sketch done right now. And nothing beats a piece of original art by the artist that you really love. Earlier, we saw Nikki hard at work in her day job. Meanwhile, Dury, already at the event, has met many of his comic book idols. Nikki is not the type of person to let one setback stop her. And in true superhero style, she has soldiered on to finish her costume and is about to debut it at another local cosplay competition, happening at Cape Town's Electronic and Gaming Expo. I must say, like, we've just come in back from inside and it's crazy. I didn't expect there to be so many people at all. My heart is beating quite fast, a massive bit. And I don't even have my full costume on yet, so I can't imagine what it's going to feel like when I'm in costume, but it's awesome. I mean, you can put on a wig, you can put on your outfit and, yeah, okay, great. But if you don't have the right makeup, especially in this character's case, then, I mean, the makeup can make or break this character, so. The little booklet that we had to submit, um, you had to go through the entire making process of the whole thing, um, step by step, how you did everything with pictures. Um, so they can see exactly how you made everything and then obviously when they judge you'll be on stage, you'll be in character, they look at um, how well you are in character, how well you pull off the costume, you know, they look at everything. It's quite hectic. Um, I had no idea things got so intense.
Comic books I've been like collecting since I was a kid. I've been reading them since I basically could read. Um, and even before I could read, I was just like leafing through pictures of comic books and stuff like that and appreciating the art and loving the art. So um, it's a huge, huge part of my life. When you're a kid, like you just want to be these people that you watch on TV. And just because you're no longer a child doesn't mean you can't or shouldn't do it anymore. I mean, why not? Like, Everybody seems like they grow up and they lose that childhood enthusiasm. And why? What for? You know, like, have fun. Let go of it. Yeah. Check out this amazing art. What is a geek? Some would say it's an eccentric loner. Others would say it's an extreme enthusiast who could be considered socially awkward or unfashionable. Whatever the naysayers may be hopping on about, it is clear that people who subscribe to the comic book geekdom don't care what you think about them. Both Jury and Nikki are well-read, intelligent and kind people who have discovered a shared love for all things comic book. They have studied and explored and found like-minded individuals. Together they understand the often very deep, meaningful and powerful social and political messaging that the comic book genre can convey.